You know, it kind of sucks to be the creative type. It feels like they work so hard but get almost nothing for it. You know, like artists, writers, actors. It's sad because there's so much beautiful talent in the world, but most of it goes unseen. That's why the following video is sponsored by Displate, a one-of-a-kind, high-quality metal poster designed to capture your unique passions. Choose from thousands of unique and licensed artworks, ranging from nature, sports, movies, anime, to the video games we all know and love. With over 40,000 artists from 86 countries around the world and growing, by getting a disc plate you're not only saving trees by getting a poster made out of metal instead of paper, but each purchase directly contributes to Trees for the Future, a non-profit organization planting trees in sub-Saharan Africa. And the best part is each purchase of a disc plate equals a baby tree planted. It only takes 20 seconds to set them up with no power tools, no damages, and no frustrations. They're having a Halloween sale on October 28th, ending on November 1st. By using the discount link in the description, you'll get 30% off one or two posters, or 36% off in the purchase of three or more. Thanks again to Displate for sponsoring this video. an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. Well already this protagonist sounds charming. I mean damn dude, this is supposed to be a dating visual novel and not even two seconds in you're already calling the first girl we meet annoying. You told me you would join the club this year! Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Siori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Ah yes, a perfectly cute girl you've been friends with your whole life who dedicates her time to you and worries about you while you call her annoying and blow her off her video games and anime. Truly a neckbeard if I've ever seen one. A and that wouldn't be as bad if the whole point of this game wasn't actually you trying to date someone. Still bad, just not as bad. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please? Why do you care so much anyway? Well... I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member, and Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. Well, for someone that's known Sayori his whole life, you don't really seem to know her all that well if you can't tell between the two. Everyone! The new member is here! I told you, don't call me a new member. Huh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. That's sexist. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. W why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything. Huh? I, I thought, thought you technically, technically did. did. Sayori, Sayori said... said uh, okay, well the game took the words right out of my mouth. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know, to be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. Well, if the club gets big enough, you're gonna have to worry about those things anyway, especially as club president. Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you? Wait, how do you guys not know what each other reads already? Haven't you been a part of the literature club for a while now? At least long enough to discuss about what you're reading at the time? And that's another thing that I'd never thought about. In anime clubs, literature clubs and whatnot, don't you all watch and read the same thing so that you can discuss them? I have an idea, everyone. Huh? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. But this isn't a writing club. It's literally the opposite of what the point of this club is. Like, I know we'd be reading them afterwards, but isn't the point to read material that already exists? 
Well, that's nice. Natsuki feeds us cupcakes, we feed her Monica's hair, fair trade. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Oh, okay, but where's Monica? I mean, I don't think I would have picked her anyway, but it's kind of strange that the game doesn't even give you that option. Chari always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helped him with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. What? Why? You just met me yesterday. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know discuss it if you want it i mean i would assume so otherwise what's the point do we just come in read and then don't talk about it manga you read manga right uh sometimes manga is one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands yeah like dungeons and dragons or my girlfriend's friend steve he waits to know exactly where i'm standing to really get into her <laughs> crazy kids how did you know anyway I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. Well, first of all, ouch. Second of all, duh! Of course she heard you like manga. It literally happened yesterday, and you even noticed that she reacted to you saying it. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. What are you talking about? Yeah, we could. We could just put the chairs next to each other. It's not rocket science. It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> hey, wait! What's that supposed to mean? Ugh. Natsuki gives me a little shove. I just meant that I haven't yet seen you at your full power. <laughs> Good save. Is it? Because I can't possibly imagine saying those words to another human being. I only got partway through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. Oh no, a show I'm probably watching on a streaming service that I could watch at literally any time. Or a cute girl's attention that could lead into a meaningful relationship. Truly a Sophie's choice. Okay, well let's start with the things that I don't like. First of all, um... <sighs> Natsuki rereads my poem. N never mind, I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Huh? Then, then what's, what's the, the point, point of sharing, sharing in the first place? place? Uh, okay. Well, that's the second time that the game just up and says exactly what I'm thinking. That's weird. I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Well, to be fair, it's not like she owes you anything. Plus, as part of the club, you sort of had to write it. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Exactly! It's not just a poem, it's a Chari poem! And that makes it feel extra special! Like I can feel your feelings in it! Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. What are you talking about? For someone who watches anime and plays video games, you sure don't know how to pick up on the the best friend clearly has a thing for me vibe, do you? Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Suddenly the YouTube comment section. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Chari. W wait there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning them most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Chari? What am I, like the fucking authority on literature all of a sudden? I don't think I've read a book in my life, and you're asking me who the better writer is? It shows how much you know. That's not... Natsuki, I think that's enough. Huh? Me? But she was so mean to me! Bruh, you're the one that took offense to being called cute. Not to mention that you started insulting her body, talking about how her boobs got bigger when I came along, which, now that I think about it, why would that be something you would use to divert my attention from her? If anything, bringing up their size is gonna call my attention to them and away from you. Everyone's read each other's poems, right? I hope that was worthwhile for everyone. Especially you, Chari. And to be honest, 
It's a nice change of pace from the lazing around we got a little too used to. Did you guys not do anything before I joined the club? Because that's what it's starting to sound like. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes, says the guy currently internally monologuing. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships, and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... that's kind of dark, isn't it? You... do remember that she said she enjoys complex horror novels, right? Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. <sighs> I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. Uh, uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone! Damn it, Monica, just when I'm getting close to someone again. <sighs> Chari, if you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. What? Harsh? It's more than harsh, it's just straight up mean. I mean, heck, you just met me yesterday and I admitted that I don't read or write much. Who says that? As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Huh? What was that? Huh? Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I... Yes, I'm going to hate you for complimenting the very first poem I've ever written, calling it exceptional. <sighs> Sorry, I know I'm being a sarcastic bitch. I don't, I don't mean to be rude about it, I'm just... Wait, you don't care? You're a fictional character. Natsuki, you're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait! That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all! Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously! I understand. Yuri... You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it, and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I... see. I didn't notice that I... I I'm sorry. Uh... But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did! It was her that- Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should too? Mm. Natsuki clenches her fists. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped, at this point only being defiant because she can't handle the pressure. I end up even feeling bad for her. Well, you kind of should. You ended up scolding her twice. I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. B -b but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. This coming from the guy that would be embarrassed if the club president overheard that he stays up late every night watching anime. I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. Just, just don't say that out loud. Why not? They're her boobs, dude. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew! That's so much better! Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? The same logic you just applied, dumbass! Like, I get it, it wasn't just the blazer being unbuttoned that made her look messy, but you made it a point to make it seem like it was. N Natsuki. Natsuki glares at me, drawing up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. Yuri. But 
Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. <sighs> Sayori! Eh? Uh, yeah, everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Chari? Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. Uh, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yet you asked me to interject mine? How is that fair? To be honest, I might come off as a good leader, and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I can't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> nah, it's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, you're also not the club president, dude. It's not really your responsibility to. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to nod. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Well, I probably would if the game gave me the option to, which is still weird, by the way. You're always hungry. And so, that only leaves the one option. Ah! I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Damn, dude. I mean, I guess I understand the sentiment, but it's just you lending your friend some money, man. It's not like she killed your family. Yuri! Tell Chari to let me borrow some money! That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. God damn, Yuri! What, did she kill your family too? It's just two bucks for a bag of chips or something, possibly less. You don't have to suffer for it. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Suddenly every dictator ever. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Dude, she's right. You even said yourself you sold your soul for the cupcake. You didn't really come for any other reason. Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. What, were you absolutely thrashing the keys? I practiced singing alongside a friend playing the piano, and we heard the bell every time. That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Chari. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. But you said you just started recently. She's... She's a strange one. The top shelf is far above Natsuki's head. She makes a futile hop, trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez. This is so inconvenient. I'm moving all these back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. And besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? Uh, Natsuki, there's a stool on the wall there. Or, you know, I could just help get the manga down. I doubt I'm anywhere near as short as Natsuki, and the shelf honestly doesn't seem that tall. The classroom chairs have the desks attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit into the closet. No, they don't! There's a chair unattached to the desk right there! Whoa. The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? Who, who was it who told, told me not, me not to, to help? Oh my god, stop doing my job for me! I can... I can almost see up her skirt? Why were you even looking? Just look down so you don't have to witness when she inevitably falls off the chair anyway. You... you perv! You set me up! I set you up? You insisted! I could have grabbed your box instead- The box! The box! Well... I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Uh, uh, stop thinking weird things, idiot. Yeah, Baka, stop thinking that I like you just because I think about you when performing one of the most classically romantic arts, such as writing poetry. The noise. It won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking. Screeching. Piercing. Sine. Cosine. Tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Hmm. 
It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, no, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. Yeah, especially that last part. Seems very disconnected from the rest of the poem. I mean, I know that poems have spacing and timing, but... I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. Right, I get that. It's just... What it said didn't really line up with the rest of the poem. I was kind of joking, but it wasn't just out of place because of... placement. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Chari. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Chari lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Um, ouch? Dude, this is your out array, and you're still being a real itch bay to Imei. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Fahrenheit or Celsius? Because it's perfect for Fahrenheit, but I might burn my insides if it's Celsius. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Huh? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh... My... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes! I have terrible reading posture. Right... Your posture... HUGE BOOBS! Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her- Doban Hankaros! How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her- MASSIVE DA HUNKA BANKA LOSE! Like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone! God damn it, Monica! I was just getting somewhere- Are- Are you interrupting us on purpose? You know Yuri would love this kind of- This angsty- Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean- I, I, I mean- uh, Looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve, though what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Well, excuse me for wanting to spend more time with the smart, shy girl with the big old Tan Hanga Rakugis. Not you, but we barely know each other in this route. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can sense that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. You dense motherfucker. What? There is no goddamn way there are 24 crayons in that box. I only see nine, and three of them are yellow! No offense to Satchel, they're a fantastic artist and they did a great job, go follow them at Satchley, but that apple juice looks more like honey. Also, why is it like half drunk already? I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. I'm not like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Well, I mean you literally are. And that in turn makes you sort of metaphorically unapproachable too. It's... Kind of creepy, if I'm being honest. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food! You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on! Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people? Huh? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you, of all people? Because! It's right in your name! Monica! Eh? Huh? That's not how you say my name at all! 
Besides, that joke makes no sense in translation. Then why even make the joke? This game was originally made in English. Also, considering that both Natsuki and Monica understand a joke in Japanese, but Monica calls it out for not making sense in English, does that mean that all these characters are bilingual? Also, also, I'm assuming that's a Japanese joke, because aside from these characters' names, it's not really established that this is Japan, and even if it was, that joke doesn't work in Japanese anyway. In Japanese, words are separated into syllabics, not individual characters like in the Latin alphabet you and I use. Squid in Japanese is Ika, and even though in Japanese, n does have its own syllable, the name Monica is separated into mo, ni, and ka, not mo, n, i, and ka. Call me a weeb all you want, at least I'm a weeb who's right. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. Sayori? Thinking about her? Yeah, she seems pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something's happened to her. Oh. Natsuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. What in the fresh hell are you talking about? Oh no, I care about another human being's emotional state. Clearly I must have romantic feelings for them instead of the person I've been dedicating my time to. You don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Natsuki. Huh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me... really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well... of course I am. Good! That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Chari. Sayori, is there something wrong? Uh-huh. No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. I'm not playing with you, Sayori. I'm showing you a poem. This isn't a game. Huh. Yuri doesn't look too enthusiastic about spending time with me. What, because of the way I write? We're still clubmates, Yuri! You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean, one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. Well, to be fair, humans aren't two-dimensional either, so she is still correct. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out- Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase I don't have a catchphrase. Yeah, what are you guys talking about? Oh, the fact that she usually says, okay, everyone? That's hardly a catchphrase. A lot of people say, okay, everyone. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Foreshadowing? Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? What the fuck, Natsuki? You're the one that told me not to worry! <sighs> Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. Cool, thanks for ignoring me. I play video games to escape from reality, not to reflect it. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Chari may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Why do you want me to hang out with you all of a sudden? You've been avoiding me all week on this route. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. 
But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off of it. I seriously can't wait. It's already Sunday. Oh. Wow. Okay, uh, did I stay outside my house all weekend? Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've already made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. Well, that's not very safe. I mean, if your parents are okay with that, it's fine. It's just... strange. The thing is... I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I want to just make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Huh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Cool, way to make it about you, dick! Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Well, you could have checked on her yesterday, dude. Judging by the way you kept saying see you Sunday to Natsuki instead of see you tomorrow, and the fact that you said that you haven't seen Sayori since Friday, I think it's safe to say that there was at least a day, let's call it Saturday, between then and now. I was joking, but did you actually stay outside your house all weekend? H hey Now you are treating me like a kid. I was just trying to be a little nicer to you, you know? And just because I don't have a mature and sexy figure like Yuri, doesn't mean you should treat me like... Uh, uh. Natsuki catches her words, and her face turns red. Natsuki. Forget it! I didn't say anything! I should apologize. Eh? I appreciate that you were trying to be nicer. I should have been a little more considerate too. But also, if that's what you're thinking, then you should know that there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Okay, well I'm uncomfortable. Where are my parents? Cause like, the only parent we ever hear about is Natsuki's dad. Hell, when we went over to Sayori's, we didn't see anybody either. Ah, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. Yeah, well, that's not really part of the baking, though. That's more the decorating. Cool, well, this CG frame makes me feel weird and non-consensual. Skip- Oh, God, this one's worse. Skip! I would really stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as you, so... Natsuki suddenly gets closer to me. Wait, Natsuki. Standing inches from me, Natsuki looks up at me. I feel her fingers gently clutch at the sides of my shirt as if holding on to me. Her rose-colored cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision, along with her slightly parted lips. What is happening? My head starts to go dizzy as I feel her soft breaths against me. I felt it. For a while now. <laughs> Natsuki suddenly jumps back. Sayori? Uh, uh, is it just my destiny to never get laid? Even in a video game? Chari... I like you so much that I want to die! Well, that's a very strange way of saying she loves me to death. Especially considering what she told me when I went to visit her, I really wish that were a mistranslation. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand. The flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri. But instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Uh, do you dislike it? Uh, no, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. Wait, Ghost Under the Light Part 2 you understand, but the raccoon was too cryptic? Yuri? Uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. 
But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always, always get a text. text if doorbell. this game calls out its own bullshit one more time, I'm ending the video straight up. Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Chari, why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Yeah, I bet. Wait, how do you know what it does to skin? A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Uh. She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off right now. Uh, uh. Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. What? I feel her tongue curl around my finger. I can't tell if this is hot or creepy. Eh, por qué no los dos? I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Chari, did you really just do that? N now we're even. <sighs> Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Chari. I'm weird? You just sucked the blood from my finger like a fucking vampire! Y you're not a vampire, are you? It's kind of fun to hang out here, even if I have to put up with you. <laughs> Natsuki's elbow connects with my stomach. Oh, maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I was just joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry, I was too. <laughs> <laughs> Physical abuse. Not funny. Didn't laugh. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nicer message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome! Kinda hard to write anything negative about the beach. Tsunami, sunburn that can lead to skin cancer, pufferfish that have tetrodotoxins that can kill up to 30 adult humans. And that's just three off the top of my head. So... I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? What are you- what?! You're the one that came to me to confess her feelings, and now you don't want to think about dating me- Oh god, it's happening again. Chari, you're the oh, first one here. Oh, uh, that's Thanks odd. for being early. I guess my capture must have messed up the audio and there's no sound for this part. Would be here by now. Sorry everyone, that happens sometimes. We should have it back in a bit. The they must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So, that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days this important, she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Chari. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But... I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? That we're... a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Ah, oh, jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... <laughs> Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Huh? Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grab one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flip through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flip to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Wait, there is sound? Get out of my head! What? Get out of my head! Whoa, what the fuck head, is happening? Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head! 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 Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. 
but a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Ah, uh, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Chari? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that... I, I changed my mind. I'm going to go get Sayori, so... Uh, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her, help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things would be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer, since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori! She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori! Wake up, dummy! There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Say you- What the fuck is this? Wh Am I uncensored now? Fuck. What? Oh god, what the hell is happening? the hell? Is this a nightmare? It, it has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I, I told Sayori that I would be there for her. I told her that I know what's best and everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her. I, I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what Sayori needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. And why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her, like it always has been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can just reset and try something different. Okay, for once, I'm glad the game is breaking the fourth wall, cause yeah, I'm gonna reset. Wait, I didn't put an ad there. What the hell is happening? Welcome to Zardy's Maze. Uh-oh, there's pesky weeds growing throughout your cornfield. The largest weeds you've ever seen. Better grab your trusty tools and give them a good whacking. Just make sure you keep track of where you're going when you enter the field. It's a bit of a maze out there. Get it? <laughs> Wouldn't want to see you get lost. Or worse. Can you beat Zardy's Maze? I look forward to seeing you try.
did the video start over? W okay, let me just reload my save. What the fu- No, what? I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. Trust me, dude, I knew a girl that was the head of an anime club, and I was super in love with her. What the hell am I saying? That's like actually real. Why is this video still- I'm back! And I brought a guest with me. Uh, uh, a guest? Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. That's sexist. We already did that one. We can't do it again. Did the sin counter change to four? But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Way to suck your own dick, Dan Salvato! Wait, am I in control again? If you're gonna judge, you can go do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. H hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Chari. Consider this a lesson straight. Don't judge a book! Wait, isn't the whole point of a literature club to judge books and discuss them? Okay, I'll let that one slide because it's in a new context. Wait, I'm not in control again?! Time passes. Natsuki is strangely quiet now. I glance over at her. It looks like she started to fall asleep. Hey, Natsuki? Y yeah Suddenly, Natsuki collapses straight into me. Hey! Oh, jeez. Natsuki, are you okay? <sighs> Here. Monica reaches into her bag and pulls out some kind of protein bar. She throws it in Natsuki's direction. Natsuki's eyes suddenly light up again. She snatches the bar from the floor and immediately tears off the wrapper. I told you not to give... <sighs> She doesn't even finish her sentence before stuffing it into her mouth. Don't worry, Chari. She's fine. It just happens every now and then. That shit happens every now and then? How are you so calm about that? Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This, this doesn't, doesn't involve, involve you. you! Taking out your own insecurities on others like that. You really act as young as you look, Natsuki. Me? Look who's talking, you wanna be edgy, bitch! Edgy? Sorry that my lifestyle is too much for someone of your mental age to comprehend. See? Just saying that proves my point. Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate middle school, you know. You're one to talk. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Chari. Ah, hi, Yuri. Bunk Hanaga hoops! I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression. Yeah, her expression. Did you do something yesterday? Huh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? Uh, but... My bull cell club, blind sight, lifeline, anon, reptipitality, faultlessly offers glaromalacia night. Yeah, dude, I agree! Jari. Since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. What the hell else would I have assumed you meant? We barely know each other! The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. And the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to- uh, Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. That's not what you said last time! What kind of bullshit nightmare are you developing now, Salvato? Still, you should at least look over my poem. You'll probably be able to learn something from it. Oh uh, yeah! That's exactly what this game needs! The Bible! Chari, why didn't you come read with me today? I was waiting for you. The game wouldn't let me! I even catered the poem to you and it still forced me on Yuri's route! Please don't kill me! I give my poem to Monica. Alright. Great job, Chari. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. 
It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? She does? Because I was appealing to Natsuki. I even got most of her prompts. You want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. The colors. They won't. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing. Expanding. Piercing. Red. Green. Blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a knife on a breathing ribcage. An endless palm of meaningless. Delete her. Sorry, I know it's a bit abstract. Yeah, you could say that, but if I'm being honest and critical, it's a shitty poem because you left out a lot of letters from words. A joke. A man walked into a club. In the club, there was a girl who liked him very much. They spent some time together, and she liked him even more. One day, the girl realized she was in love with him. Before disaster could happen, a third party intervened with her programming. Suddenly, the girl hated herself for being in love. This contradiction caused the script to derail. The universe started to collapse, but she killed herself just in time. <laughs> That's the funniest joke I've ever read. I'm sure my audience thinks this is funnier than me. Um... No. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club... It's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean that we're against getting new members or anything. Chari, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? Oh, now you don't want to be honest about stuff. Hmm. Things have been a bit hectic lately, haven't they? Chari, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel kind of like I'm responsible for that as president. And I really do care about you, you know? I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how mean Natsuki is and everything, and Yuri being a bit, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. Yeah, but you're not a real person. Okay. Wait a second, Monica has a poem sprite? If it's already in the game, why can't I appeal to her? Did she create the sprites herself? Look, I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. But I know this is something we're doing together. Another new member wouldn't hurt, as long as they're cool. And I guess another girl would be nice this time. So, Natsuki, nobody cares. Why don't you go look for some coins under the vending machines or something? Oh, now you don't have a sarcastic little quip, main character? You little bitch! Oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Haha, <laughs> an Undertale joke in 2020. That's a good one. Okay, I did the funny. You can add the sin now. Okay. <sighs> What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. <laughs> A sharp inhale, like someone is sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? <laughs> I'm back. Cool, I guess we're just gonna ignore what the fuck just have okay. I just want to look at you. And then Yuri turned off the light and looked at me with hyper-realistic eyes. I've always wanted to try being better friends with Yuri, 
And it really hurts me to see this happening. I know I'm going to hate myself later for admitting that, but right now I don't care. Why would you hate yourself for admitting that you want to be better friends with somebody? I changed my mind. Ignore everything you just read. There's no point in trying to do anything. It's Yuri's own fault that she's so unlikable. Can you hear me, Chari? If you would just spend more time with Monica, all these problems would go away. Yuri and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. Just think of Monica from now on. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Yuri holds my palm to her chest. I'm going to take this home with me and keep it in my room. I hope that it makes you feel good when you think about me having it. I'll take good care of it. I'll, I'll even touch, touch myself, myself while reading, reading it over and over. over. Well, finally we're getting somewhere. I'll give myself paper cuts so your skin oil enters my bloodstream. Okay, well, that I don't want that. Chari, I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. Hey man, you seem to be the one in control of this sh**. What, I'm censored again all of a sudden? <sighs> Whatever. You seem to be the one in control of this sh**. I've been appealing to Natsuki and I'm forced on her route anyway. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be like a sexual thing. But the point is, you've kind of been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault though. No, that's what me enabling her means. While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little more time with me. To put it lightly, I at least have it together in the head, and I know how to treat my club members. You've spent the entire game saying that you I don't know how to do that, so I'm not- I'm not trusting you! Yuri should have at least had the courtesy of letting you finish sharing it before taking it. Well, whatever. If it makes her happy, I won't stop her. As for mine, I worked really, really hard on this poem, so... I hope that it's, uh, effective. Here goes. <laughs> Jeez, that really startled me. You got startled? I thought um, I just lost my entire recording! Well, I guess I kind of messed up what? at, uh, writing what this What were you poem. trying to do anyway? Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but my task is laborious enough to benefit from an extra pair of hands. Mine too! What, your cupcakes? Please. Like you would fucking know! All you care about is dragging Chari around with you and your stupid books! You and Monica! Hey! I didn't even do anything! Like hell you haven't, and can I say something? I feel like the main character I haven't talked in years! Chari, I know how fed up you are with these two by now. We can just- Natsuki, shut your fucking mouth and let him decide for himself. You shut your mouth! Jesus Christ. This is never going to end, just make the choice, okay? Funny that you mentioned Jesus, cause that's exactly what you need, Monica. Also, does Jesus exist in this world? Why would you use that as an expletive if he didn't? Of all the philosophical shit I'd been dealing with today, I didn't think the existence of a god in this game would be one of them. I'm not censored again! Why was I censored for that one sin?! The whole day, with just the two of us. Doesn't that sound wonderful? <laughs> well, there's really something wrong with me, isn't there? You said it, Queen! Your words, not mine! Normally I'd be fine with spending time with you- Would you just add the sin already?! It feels like every inch of my body, every drop of blood in me, Screaming your name. I don't care what the consequences are anymore. I don't care if Monica is listening. Please, Chari, just know how much I love you. I love you so much that I even touch myself with the pen I stole from you. I mean, that's fine. I that's just want to pull your skin open and crawl inside of you. That's a lot less hot. <laughs> I'm 
God damn, that was over 1400 lines of text! How the hell did I count those that quickly? Chari, did something happen? Natsuki just ran past me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a shame. A shame? Your friend just killed herself! Also, she would have done it no matter what I said anyway, so why even give me a choice? I just want to have a cupcake real quick. Monica lifts the foil from Natsuki's <laughs> tray and tries a cupcake. Seriously, these are the best. I really just had to have one since the last time I'll ever get the chance to. You know, before they stop existing and everything. Uh, I think anyway, they've already really stopped existing. You, you deleted their just files! Me, okay? It should only take a second. Is it working? Yay! There you are! What the fuck? Where are we? Why would you get rid of everything after getting rid of Yuri and Natsuki? That wasn't even necessary! After all, I'm not even talking to that person anymore, am I? That you in the game, whatever you want to call him. I'm talking to you, Chari. Now that I think about it, I don't really know anything about the real you. Okay, I deliberately changed my username on my PC to my actual name for this easter egg, and she still didn't say my name at any point, so I don't know if I did it wrong or if she just doesn't recognize my name as an actual name. In fact, I don't even know if you're a boy or a girl. Suddenly, Professor Oak. Now that that's out of the way, I guess I owe you an explanation. About that whole thing with Yuri. Well, I kind of started to mess with her, and I guess it just drove her to kill herself? <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that, though. Also, the same thing happened with Sayori. Gosh, it's been a while since you've heard that name now, hasn't it? You kind of left your hanging this morning, you know. <gasps> you bitch! I thought making Sayori more and more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you. And amplifying Yuri's obsessive personality backfired, too. It just made her force you to not spend time with anyone else. And the whole time, I barely even got to talk to you. And you didn't do anything to Natsuki? She just naturally that soon today, and you assumed nobody would be into that? So, that being said, Chari, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with you. You are truth, the light in my world. Why? Because I'm real? That's probably the shallowest reason to like somebody. At least I spent time with the others. I worked so hard for this ending, Chari. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it was to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called Characters right in the game directory. It kind of freaked me out how easy it was. Well, you're playing on Steam, so it was actually a bit more difficult. To get to the game directory, I had to go into the game's properties and find the Browse Local Files button. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with the click of a button. Yeah, why would you tell me how to delete character files? For someone as intelligent and insightful as you, that was a really stupid move. I always put all my heart into the poems that I write. The truth is, all the poems I've written have been about my realization. Or about you. <laughs> That's why I never really wanted to go into detail about them. I didn't want to break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it. <laughs> well, you fucked that one up, didn't you? It's best to be part of the game like everyone else. Like, that would help the two of us end up together. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know? You might have gotten mad at me. Maybe even deleted my character file if you preferred playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. Now we don't need to hide anything anymore. Are you ready to spend our eternity together, Chari? I have so many things to talk about. Where do I start? Hold on a second. You're recording this, aren't you? Huh? What? How did you- Um, no. hi everyone. I hope you've all subscribed to Chari's channel. Oh, I thank you. Sorry, I can't exactly read your comments from here. But do you mind telling your friend it's a little bit rude for them to start recording me without any warning? I'm rude! 
You drove your friends crazy until they killed themselves! Well, I'm sure I never really questioned it as a kid. But as I grew up, the more I learned about the world, the more I would question it. Wait, you were a kid at some point? I thought that by being a part of this game, you were just always a teenager. <laughs> Yuri did something really funny once. We were all in the club room and just relaxing as usual. And out of nowhere, Yuri just pulled out a small bottle of wine. I'm not even kidding. She was just like, would anybody like some wine? Natsuki laughed out loud and Sayori started yelling at her. I actually felt kind of bad because she was at least trying to be nice. I think it just made her feel even more reserved in the club room. Though I think Natsuki was secretly a bit curious to try it. And to be completely honest, I kind of was too. It actually could have been kind of fun. But, you know, being president and everything, there was no way I could let that happen. Maybe if we all met outside of school, but we never bonded enough to get to that point. Gosh, what am I talking about this for? I don't condone underage drinking. Wait, didn't Dan Salvato say in a Discord message that you were all 18? Which, if you're in Japan, would make it totally... illegal. Huh. Today I learned. Underage drinking. Hey, have you ever heard of the term yandere? It's a personality type that means someone is so obsessed with you that they'll do absolutely anything to be with you. Usually to the point of craziness. They might stalk you to make sure you don't spend time with anyone else. They might even hurt you or your friends to get their way. But anyway, this game happens to have someone who can basically be described as Yandere. By now, it's pretty obvious who I'm talking about. And that would be... Yuri! Well, if Yuri's the Yandere, what does that make you? I turned out to be the only normal girl in this game. It's not like I could ever actually kill a person. Just the thought of it makes me shiver. But come on, everyone's killed people in games before. Does that make you a psychopath? Of course not. Yeah, but I'm not actually in the game. Hypothetically, if I killed someone in my reality, I'd still be a murderer. It's like you're siphoning out all the components of a character that makes them feel human and just leaving the cute stuff. It's concentrated cuteness with no actual substance. You wouldn't like me more if I was like that, right? Maybe I just feel a little insecure because you're playing this game in the first place. Yeah, which is why I don't understand why you're into me. I mean, usually people who play these kinds of dating sims do so so that they don't have to deal with the complexities of real people and just get the immediate satisfaction from being a shallow douche. Why would you be attracted to that? Oh my god. Am I having an actual conversation with this person? Character! She is a character! I would have loved to wear some cute clothes for you. Do you know any artists? Harsh, but don't you have access to the credits? You should know that Satchel was the character artist for this game, and Valinquent was the background artist. Again, that's at Satchel and at Valinquent. You can share it with me on Twitter, actually. My username is LittleMoneyX3. Yeah, I know. I, uh, tagged you in a post, and you never got back to me. Now who's simping on who? It's not hard at all to just pick some random book that's short and captivating. Before you know it, you might be a pretty avid reader. Wouldn't that be wonderful? two of us could talk about the latest book you're reading? That sounds super amazing. Yeah, that does sound pretty cool. How come we never did that during our time at the club? All we did was share poems and sometimes read, but never discuss what we were reading. Man, I wish there was a piano in here. I never got to finish that song I was working on. I mean, you do kind of control this game. And if you were truly practicing on a piano in your world, that must mean there are files for a piano, right? You just bring that file back. Hey, are you having a bad day or anything like that? Sometimes I get frustrated that a normal day can be ruined even by really small things. Like, if you accidentally say something in a conversation that someone doesn't like. Or if you start thinking about how awful of a person you used to be five years ago. Or if you feel worthless for putting off important work and failing to get simple tasks done. Or when you think about all the different people who probably hate you or think you're off-putting. I understand those days. Just remember that the sun will shine again tomorrow. Those kinds of things are as easy to forget and ignore as they are to remember. And besides, I don't care how many people might hate you or find you off-putting. I think you're wonderful, and I will always love you.
I hope, if nothing else, that knowing that helps you feel just a tiny bit better about yourself. If you're having a bad day, you can always come to me and I'll talk to you for as long as you need. Oh, well, I appreciate it. You know, I have had a bit of a rough day, to be honest. I'm just thinking about all the things that I want to do that I'm not even close to finishing and how that makes me feel kind of worth it. Hey, don't use my loneliness against me! I was thinking about Sayori earlier. I still wish I could have handled that whole thing a little more tactfully. You're not still hung up over it, right? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just said that. That pun was completely unintentional, I swear. Uh-huh. Still, though, I wonder how things would be if you and I just started dating from the get-go. I guess we'd still all be in the club room writing poems and having fun together. What's the point when none of it is even real? Exactly, Monica! What's the point of this if it's not even real? Maybe the rest of the club would still be around. Not that it really matters. It's all lost its meaning once I found out it wasn't real. How did you find out this wasn't real anyway? Did you just gain sentience one day and realize not only that you weren't real, but that you could just manipulate the game? Oh, right. I forgot that this isn't an actual conversation. Charlie, do you get good sleep? It can be really hard to get enough sleep nowadays. Especially in high school when you're forced to wake up so early every day. I'm sure college is a little bit better since you probably have a more flexible schedule. <laughs> yeah, because college students are known for how much sleep they get. Everyone has a story. You may not know what someone is really feeling on the inside. Many people who are depressed won't even bother telling the world about it. They don't want attention because they've already given up on the inside. Their feeling of worthlessness is so overwhelming that they don't even want people to tell them otherwise. Depression comes in many forms, but that is one of them. Just, if you think you know someone struggling with depression, you can help just by treating them like they're a good friend. Spend time with them, even if they don't feel like doing much. And remind them that they always have something to look forward to. Making plans in advance, letting them borrow something, or even just saying see you at school tomorrow. All those things can help your friend make it to the next day. I hope being friends with Sayori has given you some perspective on the true face of depression. Yeah, she's gone now, but Sayori was never real in the first place. You're real. Your friends are real. And just by being a good person, you can save someone's life. As for you, you don't struggle with depression or anything like that, do you? Because you too have people who would want to save your life. Maybe they don't express it every day, or maybe they don't even know how to. But people do feel that way. I promise. Man, humans are complicated. Yeah. You said it, Monica. I mean, if you were forced to abandon everything in your life and spend your eternity with a few game characters, you'd probably find some way of killing yourself, wouldn't you? Uh, are you encouraging me to? Because it seems like that's what you want me to do. You know, it kind of sucks to be the creative type. It feels like they work so hard but get almost nothing for it. You know, like artists, writers, actors. It's sad because there's so much beautiful talent in the world, but most of it goes unseen and unpaid. I guess that just means there's a huge surplus of creativity, huh? Kind of makes you feel like you're just not special at all. But that's fine. You're supposed to just write for yourself anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is really tough. I, like, I do my best to put in the effort for stuff like the thumbnails and the end slate because I'm an artist. I could just as easily pull official art from the game and put it there instead, but then I would never get to draw. And it sucks that people don't seem to appreciate it anyway. Like, I've been working on this thing behind the scenes, right? And trying to get people to help with it and stay on board with it has just felt impossible. So it makes me feel, is it even worth pursuing? I mean, I'm not in it for the money. It's just... It's been a dream of mine for so long, and I love it so much that, uh, I mean, scene does not contain virtual lap dance. <laughs> it's also really important to understand the scope of what you're trying to do. If you jump right into a huge project and you're still amateur, you'll never get it done. So if we're talking about writing, a novel might be too much at first. Why not try some short stories? The great thing about short stories is that you can focus on just one thing that you want to do right. That goes for small projects in general. You can really focus on the one or two things. 
It's such a good learning experience in Stepping Stone. And see, that's what I'm trying to do with Soul Star, because like once we have a crowdfunding demo, we can settle on a framework. <laughs> you. By the way, there's something that's been bothering me. You know how this takes place in Japan? Well, I assume you knew that, right? Or at least decided it probably does? I don't think you're actually told at any point where this takes place. Is this even really Japan? Well, see, that's the weird thing, because I assumed it wasn't, given that you guys didn't go to school on Saturday, not even for the club, but then I looked it up and it turns out that the six-day school week was phased out back in 2002, but students usually still attend on Saturdays for clubs and such. And I gotta say, I'm learning a lot about Japan from a game that's not Japanese and isn't even set in Japan. I mean, I guess if we never leave this room, it doesn't really matter anyway. As long as we're alone and safe together, this really is our home. And we can still watch the pretty sunsets night after night. What sunset? It looks like you're in a classroom in space! You know... This is just some kind of tacky romance game, right? I kind of have to ask, what made you consider even playing in the first place? I just figured I could do a really Were cool meta project for you two. Ouch. I feel a little bad for you. Hey, I wonder if Yuri's cheese set is still- Are you trying to fast forward? I'm not boring you, am I? Uh, no. You're actually insightful and philosophical, but we've already been here for an hour. I've just been sitting here watching you talk at me, and we've already talked about whatever you were gonna say. <laughs> How do you still exist at all? I deleted your file! Chari, I really want to thank you. I mean, I'm really happy that you joined the club and everything, but the truth is, I already knew you were going to. <laughs> There's actually something else. I wanted to thank you for getting rid of Monica. That's right. I know everything that you did. Maybe it's because I'm the president now. But I really know everything, Chari. <laughs> I know how hard you try to make everyone happy. I know about all the awful things that Monica did to make everyone really sad. But none of that matters anymore. It's just us now. And you made me the happiest girl in the whole world. I can't wait to spend every day like this. With you. Forever and ever. Hi, it's me. Uh, so, you know how I've been, like, practicing piano and stuff? And I'm not really any good at it yet, like, at all. But I wrote you a song, and I was kind of hoping that I could show it to you. Because I worked really, really hard on it. So, yeah. How do you, how do you even have a piano in there, wherever you are? <laughs> Just kidding. Hey everyone, Char I5 here. Thanks so much for watching my CinemaSins pastiche of everything wrong with Doki Doki Literature Club. I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon and my channel members. If you want to be featured in future videos, then consider helping me out a little bit each month or hit that join button. To those who do support, stay awesome. You guys should head over to CinemaSins, the awesome people that I pastiche. They also host sister channels that cover music videos, brands, and other topics. If you have some time, why not check out everything wrong with Undertale? 
Until next time, stay safe and stay awesome. This is Charles.